All right, welcome back everyone. Um, kind of a different type of video today. Welcome to my uh, v very organized machine shop here. Anyway, not very big, it's a bunch of storage. I don't want to make, this is, we have this out here. This is all my camping stuff. I want it to smell like uh, machine oil. So that's why it's out here. I um, have my little Enco um, 9x42 probably, I don't know. Uh, Nemil. I bought this at uh, the university when I worked there. This is a, um, uh, you know, nowhere near as good as a Bridgeport, probably, you know, a new Bridgeport, obviously, but it's a pretty good rig. I like it. It works good for what I do. I don't make tons and tons of parts. I just come out here and make noise and turn uh, perfectly good pieces of metal into scrap uh, most of the time. Um, so what we're doing today, when I bought this lathe, it came with a bunch of, um, uh, a bunch of parts. I didn't really know what they did. They're all right here. I, well, I knew what some of them did. There's some dead centers and, you know, uh, uh, yep, that, some center adapters, uh, a few wrenches, things like that. Uh, I don't remember what else was in there. I think maybe uh, some old cutters. I think I ended up just throwing away because they weren't any good. A great big, I think it's like a 12 inch dog drive plate some i don't know what that oil is it stinks and it's like a you know worm gear viscosity something i don't remember um and it also came with a couple of parts it came with um this guy here so this is a spindle protector call it adapter i'll take those apart and show them to you in a minute i mean this is a claw it's causing but it's a it's a colchester claw i don't know it's made it's a uh I think it's like a Mark one and a half, 13 inch closing, I think. Um, and so the cool thing was, the, the reason that you want a, a collet chuck is because typically your, your work, um, you can hold it much more precisely. Um, and it's much more, uh, it's, it's much more concentric and it's a, it's a repeatable uh, or easily repeatable position. It's a lot easier than setting up a, a four jaw. You are limited obviously by the size of the collet you put in it, you can't hold. You can hold huge material in a four jaw. You can also hold uh, uh, out of shape material in a four jaw. You can with a collet too, but um, uh, obviously they they're they're completely different. Similar in some ways, different in others. But anyways, I I wanted one of these. I didn't have one, uh, or I didn't think so at least. And now I do, uh, in fact, have most of one. Uh, what I didn't have was the draw bar, and so what the draw bar is is these collets, they're threaded on the back. I'll give the camera any for a second. Not prepared, surprise, surprise. This is a 5C collet. Um, i got a little guy right there who just wants to be a star. Yeah, I would like you to not be a star. It's a mini spider and I love spiders, uh, especially when they're smushed and gone. Okay, that one's gone. So anyways, uh, this is a 5C collet. This is what they look like installed. So they look like in your hand. And that's what that is. And what a draw bar does, it has, basically this is the one that I bought and took apart. So the draw bar has the opposite of that thread. And the idea being that the collet and the draw bar screw together. Um, the collet is obviously tapered. And so there's a matching taper, or the, the inverse of that. In this collet adapter, so that way, when you when you pull your your draw bar, uh, when you tighten your draw bar, it pulls the collet into the adapter, tightens it up, holds your work. This is just hand tight. Um, on the other end, I'll show you here, but it, it does hold it very well. Uh, but the problem was is that that one was like six inches too short. So what I've done is I there was a guy on eBay of all places who was selling a blank 24 inch blank, which is Super. I've installed the collet, tightened this most of the way, made a mark. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I have to turn this down to a shoulder right there. That will go there. We have this thrust bearing, which when I pulled this apart yesterday, it actually it has the original cosmoline in it. it seems to, anyways. Which, you see that yellow color, I can't, if you know what Cosmoline smells like, and that's it, if you don't, then you can only have to imagine it. Uh, and then we have this cone, uh, will sit 
here and there's another taper on the inside of that a chamfer uh, so once I turn this down this will fit here thrust bearing rides on that surface there bearing sits inside of that it will ride on this here like that and then we can use that this hand wheel will spin the draw bar tighten into the collet pull everything together and we'll have ourselves a collet attachment for a Mark 1.5 Claus and Colchester, which will be great. So we'll turn this down uh, to the shoulder here, and then we'll test fit everything. We'll put this all back together and see how well it works, and then uh, maybe we'll actually try it out, which will be cool. So uh, we will reset that up and go from there. All right, so we've got uh, my shoulder turned down there, as uh, 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 turned to the shoulder, and I've squared it off with the uh, the parting blade, which is still in the lathe here. That's a little wobbly, but it worked fine. Uh, then we have this turned down to where it needs to be. So here is our tapered part. Right there. Actually fits pretty good. A little bit of slop there. It's actually perfect because there is a hole right there. Uh, is designed, it's, but you can actually, uh, as an oiler, uh, you put oil in there. So just a little bit of slop is good so that you can get a film of oil in there, which is uh, what you want uh, for lubrication. And there's a thrust bearing here, it's three parts. Uh, anyways, if you know what cosmoline smells like, it smells like that. If you don't, it smells like cosmoline. Uh, so and that goes there. It's a really nice, uh, really nice fit. And so uh, we have this part here and uh, these three holes. Uh, hold the the wheel Right which will go on there. So what will uh, uh, this will spin the whole thing. So <clears throat> what we need to do Deburring tool It's a sweet little tool. And so maybe if I just take this And kind of sweep it. It's got a little Blade right there and you sweep it around and it uh, it will take the sharp edge off a of thing I think if I do that a little bit with this part, uh, it will chamfer it just enough to scoop onto that guy right there. Put some high quality silkaline by that one. Take so nice. Oh yeah. It's a great part. So good. Clean that out just a little bit. There's not a lot of chips or anything in there. Probably should hit that with a little brake clean just to make sure that the uh, the goop is out of there. So we'll do that. Alright, so I've got the uh, that thing pressed onto that thing. It's just a pretty technical try to keep up, and um, I haven't I haven't drilled any holes yet for the uh, for those uh, set screws. But I wanted to test the fit, and this is a it's a really tight fit that I probably could have turned that down a little bit more. But if we get it pressed on, it's good. It spins nice and freely, or as freely as it should against that bearing. It's very smooth. It's a nice fit, and so what we'll do now is we'll take. We've got those three screws, the hand wheel, and we'll just scoop that on there. And uh, you can see that fits, it's very nice. This, uh, on the original part, this is turned flush. I'm not sure if I'll do it or not. Um, I, I don't know, probably should to make it look perfect, but I kind of like that it's not perfect because uh, that's how I roll. So I'll put those screws in and we'll see how well this fits with the collet attachment I have on the other side. Um, I think what I did is I measured this. You see what I mean? I don't need to say it anymore. Uh. And <laughs> Find 
this slot popping out pops out there we go Four millimeter, not I don't know, whatever size it's supposed to be in standard. Three thirty seconds or something. Not three thirty. I don't know. Doesn't matter. It's all good. So ideally, ooh, oh, it feels like it might. I might have gone. I'm just going to assume that's good. Alright, so the set screws are in. One here, one right there. That's just an oil hole there. I need to just clean that out a little bit so we can put some oil in there. And that oils the, this against the shaft. The bearing in there is all greased. It's good to go. This is just a spacer. It's off camera. It doesn't matter. And we're going to polish this up just a little bit because it's a shame to go through all this work and have this nasty looking thing on the end. Even though nothing else in here is clean, but uh, at least this will be, so we'll do that. I uh, apologize for the noise, you probably just hear my uh, frequency drive here screaming away with the fan on it. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? somewhat shiny manufactured by Royal Products Manufacturing New York pretty cool we'll clean out that oil hole and should be good to go final touch I'm taking look at that Nice. There we go. Get that nice click. Screws in. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. So, that's what it's going to look like. Right. Handles screwed on. I left that a little proud out there. I don't mind. I, it's kind of neat, I guess. It looks uh, shop made, which it is. 
I could cut that back and chamfer it and make it look nice, but I don't feel like it. I like it to look like an idiot made it. Because, well. And there we go. Get a 5 16 collet holding a piece of 5 16 round stainless. So it holds up pretty well. Way. Right, pretty sweet and then what we do we kind of lock that in so we use that guy there put the two top handles uh, touching each other they don't quite look like that and this this lever here 81 that's as slow as it gets so it effectively kind of locks the carriage carriage uh, the spindle and we can just <coughs> Right. So just back that out, you can see that backing out of there, and then we take and push that side. And there we go. That's cool. I'm excited. I gotta find another project now. I don't know what it is. It's gonna be. My project for tonight's gonna be go to bed. It's a long day. I'll take that, put it in my organized pile. This, uh, we'll put that there. I'm gonna get to organizing this place. Well, sweet, so there it is, that's the project. Um, I'm pretty happy with it, came out pretty well. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna store this, I'll have to find a way. I'll probably just, I wanna leave it in there and get filled with crap for now. We'll put it up here. That's right in the way. So maybe we'll just take an arrow uh, and chuck it back there like that. And the way to uh, the way we take this apart, actually that's pretty cool. Got our spanner. This is definitely a shop made piece. Hey, look at that light, that's cool. Alright, so this is a captured, a great big captured nut that would tighten it. It's a huge long thing. Take and <laughs> All right, we loosen this bad boy, and then it stops. Uh, boy, I wonder why that stops. Just kidding, I know, because it hits that collet holder. Here we take and pop it like that. Put that back. You don't need a long wrench. You really don't need a hammer on these that hard. Uh, like with a wrench and stuff, you can, but you don't need to. So that pops out. We've got that popped, ish. Oh, I might put the wrench away too quick. <laughs> yep. Just kidding. Just kidding. You do need to refund this. <laughs> hey yeah. All right. Let's hope oh, that's gonna come out and not break. Literally the first time I use it. I take a picture of a lot of stuff. It's not. Ah, there we go. Came out that time. Yay. So there it is. There's our adapter there's a spindle protector that just comes in right up see like that put that here for now that's the spindle l oh, l0 probably l00 i don't know if that great big nuts captured nut that's captured means it doesn't come off it's stuck and that's it